Ladies and gentlemen, in case you did not look at my assignment board, I did update it. Today, yesterday we had nothing. We did nothing. Today we're doing a lecture and we're going to haul it real quick. Tomorrow you have a test. It is 25 questions, 30 minutes is how much time you have. You have a focus, a pieces, and a map due. Any questions of what's happening tomorrow? Okay. Week 21 starts on Friday. We're a day behind, so we're going to get caught up. You will notice on Friday you do have a vocab quiz, 1 through 10 on Friday. Please make sure you're making note of that and you have a lecture. Monday you have 11 through 20 and you're doing a primary <coughs> source. Tuesday, 21 through 30 and a lecture. And then Wednesday you have a test, 28 minutes. From there, we'll go a minute down on every test. Okay, so that will be the last sizable kind of drop, two minutes, and every week after that, we'll cut back a minute, okay? So, uh, next Wednesday, we need to get back on schedule, because I'm not supposed to be testing on Thursdays. No one should be yelling at me for tomorrow, but going forward, we need to get back on Wednesday. Is everyone clear on what the rest of this week is going to look like? Everyone good? Okay, so, uh, Victoria, tomorrow while they're testing, you're not testing. That would be so rude. Um, and I will get you caught up. I will sit down with you, and I will explain everything you need, okay? So tomorrow it'll be a catch-up, and you'll have an understanding of what is happening here. All right, on your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the name of the gentleman who invented the steam engine? Good, Jack. James Watt, on your whiteboard, who invented the cotton gin? Good. What do you got, Miranda? You are with on your whiteboard, please tell me what invention allows steel mass production? <coughs> Good. Car uh, Callie. Bessemer converter. Bessemer converter. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of... Please tell me what is... Oh, the two major raw materials you need to have in order to industrialize. Good. Michael. Coal and iron ore. On your whiteboard, what infrastructure does one have to have, one country need to have in order to industrialize? Infrastructure. Good. Maddie. Railroads. Railroads. On your whiteboard, what is the name of the first locomotive? No, it's not called a train. What is it, Ms. Moore? The rocket. The rocket. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of uh, my first, my top four most powerful countries in order of power. My four industrialized countries in order of power. Good. No, you're wrong. Good. What do we got? Marley. England, France, US, England, France, US, then Germany. Why is Germany towards the bottom of the list? Why is Germany? It makes logical sense. Why? Carly? Huh? Okay, they're a little bit fragmented. <laughs> Otto von Bismarck is unifying them. But what else don't they have a ton of? Michael? No, they have plenty of railroads. They don't have what, Ellie? Rivers? No, guys, we did a whole damn map on this. Avery? Natural resources. Yeah, they don't have a ton of natural resources. But because they have railroads, they can import it from other places very successfully. Okay, so... All right, here we go. On your w notebook, let's go. Let's transition. Who can raise your hand and tell me where we left off? Ellie. Um, okay, so we got to Henry Ford. Henry Ford does not invent cars. He invents the assembly line. Every single thing that you are wearing and that you own is made on an assembly line. If I invited you over to my house tonight to help me make cookies, guess, are we all going to bake put all the ingredients in at the same time? Are we going to mix it and stand and watch it mix, or are we going to make an assembly line to make it faster? Assembly line, okay? So assembly line is his big invention. Corporations are the next big invention that you need to know. You're going to write down this bullet point. Corporations form to share risk, maximize profits. Corporations form to share risk and maximize profits. Starting a business is very expensive. Money is what we call capital. You need to have lots of capital to start a business. So corporations come up with a new way. How do I buy into a corporation? What is the term we use for it? Tessa. 
Shares, but what's a more common term? Stocks. When you hear the stock market, like for instance, you can buy stock today in Apple, it's like 500 bucks a share. A uh, share, by the way. So if you buy a share, you technically buy a piece of Apple. With that $500 you paid for that share, that's uh, some of that money, most of that money goes to Apple and they can invest it in anything they need. Guess what they don't need? You invest it. They've got plenty of money. They have a billion dollars in cash. Did you know that? In cash. In cash. You need to know that large corporations, you're going to write this bullet point right, under, uh, right next to it as well. Large corporations form blocks to drive out competition, to keep prices high. This is what we call monopoly. Have you ever played that terrible board game? Yes? My husband loves that stupid board game. Oh, I hate it so much. Monopoly is based on real life. Okay? The first major monopoly in the world is by a guy named John D. Rockefeller. Oh my God, do you know that name? The Rockefellers are American royalty, ladies and gentlemen. Does anyone know the company John D. Rockefeller started? Kelly? It is not a railroad company. It's great guys, but it's not a railroad company. He created Standard Oil. You need to know that. It is the first monopoly in history. Okay, so what does that mean? You don't need to write this down, but you should be listening pretty closely. So John D. Rockefeller started Standard Oil. It was a very small company when he started and obviously grew into one of the, uh, the largest company the uh, world's ever seen. Okay, what would happen is John D. Rockefeller started in Texas with oil. Once he made some money, he bought more oil. And once he made more money, he bought more oil. And then kept buying oil and oil and oil and buying massive parts. Eventually, he controlled the entire oil industry. So if he decided he wanted to increase the price of a gallon by 50 cents, pretty much every gas tank in the country went up 50 cents. If he wanted to drop prices, he could drop prices for the entire country. Guess what he never did? He actually did drop prices a couple of times because he was trying to um, hurt another business that he was trying to buy. So if you're like in Oklahoma and you're like resisting being bought by Standard Oil, he would drop the prices of all of the Standard Oil pumps, so your company couldn't make money, so your company would go belly up and you could buy you really cheap. It's brilliant. Terrible. This is this a good thing or a bad thing when one person controls the whole market? It's a bad thing, absolutely, because we as the customers are the ones who are going to lose. A modern day example of this, I don't know if you remember two or three years ago, a new CEO came into a pharmaceutical company and he jacked up the prices for EpiPens. So instead of paying $150 for an EpiPen, you're now paying $450 to like $650 for an EpiPen. And if you don't know what an EpiPen is, if your kid is like allergic or you're allergic to like peanuts or something, that EpiPen is what you shove into your thighs so you don't die. Well, if you jack up the price of EpiPens, pretty much everyone is still going to what? Buy the EpiPens because if you don't, people are going to die. So people didn't have a choice and it was called a monopoly and he ended up losing everything. Okay, so it was a big deal. What? Yeah, they're expensive. They're still expensive, but they're not 560 bucks like he jacked up the prices to. Okay, so those are monopolies. Okay. Your next big thing is skip a space, center it, social. Social changes is your next setting. Okay, population growth is occurring. You need to know that from the start next to it. You need to know that population growths are occurring. There's a couple of reasons why. Okay? You need to, uh, people are eating better. Why are people eating better? Well, that makes a lot of sense. What do you got here? There's more food. There's more food around. Okay, people are eating better. We have vaccines, so people are living longer. You need to be making that note. Okay, people are eating better so they're healthier. People, are, we have vaccines now. Okay, so these vaccines, people are living longer. Okay, however, this is the weird part, and you need to put a star next to it. Remember, AP loves weird stuff. Despite the fact the population is going up, fertility goes down. So, there are more people on the planet than ever before, but fertility goes down. And what is fertility? Oh God, people. What is fertility? Ethan. Yeah, being able to reproduce. Okay? So, 
Fertility, it declines because of two things you need to know. It declines because of pollution. Keep in mind, these, uh, there's no regulation on pollution, so it's horrible. And then the second thing is women are working full time in factories. Are these factories safe? Are they clean? No, so we're having a bunch of issues there. <coughs> Continuing under the heading of social changes, we have contraception. Okay, this is a very big deal. Okay, contraception is going to be spearheaded by a guy named Thomas Malthus. Okay, contraception. What is contraception? Oh my God, people. Hold on. What is contraception? Jose? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's condoms, it's a pill, a modern day pill. Uh, it's diaphragms, all these other things to avoid getting pregnant. Okay, so Thomas Malthus says that overpopulation will cause a moral decay. So if we have too many people, the world's going to go into chaos. That was his argument. What do you got, Marley? Is he the guy who said something about uh, growth and actually allowing human genetics? Yeah, and it's all that. And they push next year, you go way more into it. Okay, so. Thomas Malthus, he's the guy really saying that we need to control the populations, okay? And because of that, we have mass-produced condoms for the first time, and you do need to know that, okay? Beforehand, ladies and gentlemen, since ancient times, we've had makeshift condoms. Makeshift condoms have been made out of, they, you can still buy them today, actually. Um, if you go to like, the condom aisle of like, any store, you'll see natural condoms, they call them natural skins or something like that. It's not skin. It's sheep intestines. And, and you can use them still today. You can still buy them here in 2020. They're, they're made out of sheep's... Uh, they're called sheepskin. Yeah, they're called sheepskin condoms. But they're not sheepskin. It's actually sheep intestines. Uh, condoms that are being made during the industrial age are going to be made uh, as well, uh, not from sheepskin, they're going to have other means to do it. I don't know exactly how they do it. Obviously in 2020 we have latex condoms, which are way more successful than uh, sheepskin condoms or sheep intestine condoms. Sheep intestines doesn't really look good on a box, you know what I mean? So it makes sense that they would call them sheepskin. Uh, condoms are important for two reasons. Populations will stabilize. Populations will stabilize. This is the big thing, and this is such a big thing for every woman in this classroom. It allows women to start controlling their bodies. Keep in mind, ladies, uh, in the 1960s, 1960s, your husband could rape you at any time, and it wasn't against the law because your husband owned you. In 1970s, it was put on the law that you can't rape your wife. In the 1970s, it was finally enforced. So, by the 1970s here in the United States, you could tell your husband no, we're not having sex, and your husband would then force you to have sex, and then you could charge him with rape for the first time. Keep in mind, before the 1970s, anytime your husband wanted to have sex, you had to have sex, or you'd be raped, and you couldn't do anything about it anyway, and you'd be forced to have a kid. Because you have no control over the uh, reproduction. Now keep in mind, if you have two kids already and you're struggling to pay the bills, can't afford to feed them, your kids are starving, would adding a third one be helpful? Fourth one. Fifth one. Sixth one. How about nine? Yeah, no, that's not very helpful and it's not very good for family planning, which is why contraception is such a big thing for women. For the first time, women are able to kind of control when they're going to have kids and not have kids. Uh, it gives them independence. All right. Urbanization causes pollution, overcrowding. Still under social changes. So urbanization is going to cause pollution and overcrowding. Ladies and gentlemen, would you want to live in New York City during this time? Keep in mind, there's no plumbing in the 1860s. So what would happen in the 1850s, 40s? There's no plumbing. So what happens is, is like you would like go to the bathroom like cook and tea in a bucket, and guess what you do with the bucket? You chuck it into the street. So then when you walk through said street, you're walking in your poop, your neighbor's poop and pee, the horse's poop and pee, and then you walk in and out of your house. 
So, because of urbanization, it's unsanitary. Guess what we have plenty of? Diseases. People are dying incredibly faster. Okay, so because of that, we have um, people are dying incredibly faster. Okay, okay. Next, uh, underneath this still, you have migration. Migrations. You need to know that Europeans are fleeing Europe. Europeans are fleeing Europe to come to America. Is it because America is just awesome or things are bad back home? Things are bad back home. Okay, is it better in America? That's what they hope. That's the American dream, but it wasn't like definitive. Okay, things were really bad back home. So, Ladies and gentlemen, everyone in this room, unless you're a Native American, are an immigrant. I would bet most of you, like 90% of you, your ancestors are coming during this time, during the Industrial Age. If you are, for instance, the British, if you are of British descent, I am from British descent, you're going to write this down, people are fleeing Britain because of urbanization slums. They're so bad in England. They are horrific in England. Why are they so bad in England? It's where it started, so they've been doing it longer, so there's a lot more waste, there's a lot more pollution. It's also way less space, so everything is jam-packed into a small area, and it's terrible. So if you're of British descent, okay, your family has done the my DNA test or whatever crap it is, okay, your pet, your ancestors probably came from this time if you're British. Irish people, you're going to write this down as well. Irish are coming here because of the potato famine. Okay? My dad's side is Irish, and that is why his family fleed Ireland is because of the potato famine. Did you know we have more Irish people in America than they do in Ireland? And then finally, if you're Jewish, if you're Jewish, you probably came here during the, your ancestors probably came time, and it is because they're trying to flee the Russian uh, persecution. The Russians are going to have a huge influence in Eastern Europe, so they may not be Russian descent, but Eastern European, they're also going to be fleeing. So most of your Jews are coming here during this time as well. Okay? Alright, so new social class. Uh, you can write middle class. So uh, Middle class is your heading. Okay. We have two new names that you need to know. Uh, you need to put a star next to that industrialization brings wealth to most people. Industrialization brings wealth to most people. Now, is every single person in the world going to be richer? No. However, most people's station in life are going to improve, so that's a good thing. Now, are some people going to improve more than others? Yes. If you're a John D. Rockefeller, you were born poor. Guess what? He's definitely not dying. Poor. Yeah. No, no, no. He owned most of, like, half of Manhattan for a while. Like, the man did fine. Okay. You need to know that we have two different types of workers now. We have white-collar workers and blue-collar workers. You should know these terms. I am a white-collar worker. So I rely on my education. You need to know that. A white collar worker relies on education. So technically, I know how to do my job because I went to college. Would you agree with that? How many teachers do you know go to college? All of them. Do you think all of them are good at their job? Do you think I'm good at my job? I'm not really sure. Thank you. Then you have blue collar workers. What's a blue collar worker? You should know this. No white one. Someone who works with their hands, absolutely. A blue collar worker is someone who works with their hands. So if you work in a factory, what are you? A blue collar worker. Okay. Now, someone I mentioned last period that a blue collar worker, perfect example of 2020, would be the <coughs> trash guy. He's a blue collar worker. Or she. I just don't know if there's many female ones. I'm not really sure. Anyway, that tr the average starting salary of a trash collector in Hillsborough County, by the way, the same employer of me, uh, makes two and a half times my salary. 
I have three degrees. So before you start talking shit about the trash collector, they make bank, okay? And they don't go home and worry about AP. They go home and, like, live their lives and enjoy their families. So, you know, things could be different is what I'm saying. Moving forward. All right. Women. Okay. You need to know that women have a double burden. You're going to write down this bullet point. They have a double burden. They are expected to maintain the home as well as to work in an industry. Ladies in this room, I would love to tell you that is different in 2020, but that's fake news. Ladies, you will go to college. You will get a job. You will find a husband if you want or not live your life. Okay? And guess what? You will still be responsible, even though you may split incomes with your husband 50-50. Maybe you will make more money than your husband. However, guess who is still doing the responsibility of the housework? You. You. Think about it in your house. Who does most of the housework? Think about it. Now, I will give men props. Have they, are they doing more now than they have been in the history of men? Yes. You need to appreciate that. You don't appreciate that. Thing. You should. You know what I mean? So, my husband vacuums every once in a while. He does do dishes. He's pretty good at doing dishes. He's really good at putting away dishes. But, like, I'm not sure if he knows how to clean a toilet. But the toilet keeps getting cleaned. What do you think he thinks it's magic? He doesn't know how to clean a shower. He doesn't know how to do some of this shit. Anyway, I will tell you, I don't know if you know I'm a kind of a raging feminist. Have you seen it? I hide it really well. I hide it super well. I will tell you I do most of the chores in my house. Welcome to 2020. Now, my husband does make way more money than I do, almost like four times my salary, so there's a little bit of a problem there. But my best friend, her and her husband split everything 50-50, and she makes more money than him too, so that's like even cooler. Anyway. So look forward to that, ladies. You still got the double burden. Just a fun fact. All right. You also need to know that working class women were expected to work before marriage and after having children. Now, I will tell you, why are women working in the first place? Is it because we wanted women to be independent and know what making money feels like? Or is it because they needed to work? They needed to work. Because living in cities became too expensive. A man could not afford to, one man could not afford to keep his family of four um, afloat on one salary, so the wife had to go to work. So women were going to work, not because we wanted to give them independence and freedom and a taste of, like, you know, actual, genuine self-motivation. Uh, they had to go to work. Okay? Same thing. Child labor is going to happen. Why are we sending children to work? Is it because we wanted them to work? And stop, and stop being freeloaders, or is it because we needed them to work? We needed them to work, so you need to acknowledge that as well. Children are working because the men had to have help making money, because rent and food costs were so expensive in cities. So children were working, uh, not because they were like, yeah, this kid's a freeloader, let's make him work. Uh, except that one kid, have you heard the largest viewed kid on YouTube made $26 million last year? It's like Ryan's World or something. I don't know. I don't know. I hate that kid. <laughs> Whoever it is, he just plays with toys on camera and opens things and like talks about the toys and what he thinks about them. And he made $26 million last year. What the hell? But anyway, and he got investigated. His parents are being investigated for uh, child labor. What? Infractions. Wait, actually? Yeah, they are. I don't know if anything's going to come out of it, but they uh, got a bunch of tips from people saying, like, this kid's not enjoying it. But the kid made $26 million. Like, keep it up, kid. Like, next year, it's going to be 28 <coughs> Well, what is not keeping it? Oh, well, that's the other problem. Where's the money going? They yeah. say it's putting it into scholarship funds, but the family just bought, like, Yeah, he's like, we're going to do it. <laughs> this kid is going to be a YouTube sensation. 
by the way. He's sharing genetics with me and my husband. This kid will not be a talent. Have no talent. Well, no one will give a shit. It's fine. All right, let's give a space center. It's <coughs> Can you imagine if your kid raked in $26 million a year? That would just be the best. <laughs> All right, socialism. Okay, if you look on my board over here, ladies and gentlemen, I warned you at the beginning of class, you need to take a photo of it. Is it because I'm trying to be tricky or am I trying to assist you in every way I possibly can? I'm trying to help you in every way that I can. I want you to write this down for... Karl Marx. You need to know Karl Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto, and he is the creator of communism. That's what you need to write down next to it. Okay, so socialism. You need to absolutely know Karl Marx's name. I will be talking about Karl Marx and the Communist Manifesto until the last week of content, ladies and gentlemen, because that's when communism really takes off. So, we're going to start it during the Industrial Age, and it's going to explode. This is a recurring theme, you might as well just memorize it. You need to know that Karl Marx believes that there are two major classes, and you need to write this bullet point down, capitalist and proletariat. Okay, he believes there are two major classes, capitalists who, are, who control the means of production. After means of production, I would write factory owners, which simplifies it. Then you have the proletariat, who are the wage workers who sell labor. These are your factory workers. So you need to write down two major classes, capitalists who control the means of production, factory owners, people who are making the money off of industrialization. And then you need to know the proletariat. These are the wage uh, workers, your factory <laughs> You need to write down this. You need to write that Karl Marx believed that the proletariat would overthrow the factory owners. Karl Marx believed that the factory, uh, the proletariat would overthrow the factory owners. So he believed that the people would overthrow and they would go meep, 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 and kill the factory owners. The factory workers would kill the factory owners, beat them to death, stab them to death, smash them to death, who knows, and stand over their bodies and say, we are in charge, and then equally distribute the wealth to all the people. Underneath that, you're going to put a big star and says, this never happened. Because governments intrude, governments start regulating economies. This never happens because governments start regulating economies. Okay? So underneath that, you're going to write, the governments pass laws to protect workers. Okay? Governments pass laws to protect workers. And unions improve the lives of workers. So, Karl Marx, was he right? No. Is it an interesting idea? Yes. In a wonderful, perfect society when we want communism to kind of work? Yeah, right? Everyone's equal. Everyone has a share, fair share. It sounds really beautiful. Do I think it will ever occur? Hell no. Why? Because humans are corrupt. <laughs> By, uh by our own nature. I don't think it'll ever work personally, uh, but here we are. Okay, skip space, center at the Americas. Okay, you need to have manifest destiny, which is right here on my board. Manifest destiny, you need to write down. I am highlighting uh, and hauling it today. I think you see that. I'm sweating a little bit. Fingers getting a little little time. Manifest destiny is the belief that white, 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 white Americans had the right to America's western territory. Keep in mind, during the time of the belief of American, of uh, manifest destiny, we freed about six million people from slavery. Guess what we refused to give them? Land out west. We refused to give them. But if you were an Irish immigrant who just showed up from Ireland and you've never stepped in the soil, guess what we would give you? 
10 acres and a mule to go out west. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. So what happened to all of our slaves? Oh, they got pulled back into a sharecropping system and were abused and neglected and harassed for the next 100 years until, you know, civil rights movement. So, yay, America. Okay, so Manifest Destiny is the belief that white settlers had the right to. You also need to know the U.S. Indian Removal Act of the 1830. U.S. Indian Removal Act of 1830, also known as the Trail of Tears, which is also on this board over here, ladies and gentlemen, right here. Trail of Tears is the forced removal of the Cherokee natives by the U.S. government. The U.S. Removal Act, Indian Removal Act of 1830. Does anyone know who the president who signed it and enforced it? Sean? Jackson. Jackson. Okay, Andrew Jackson. Now, we wanted the land in Oklahoma. Uh, we wanted the land in uh, just west of the Mississippi on the other side of uh, Mississippi, Alabama. On the other side of Alabama, we wanted that land. That's where the Cherokee were living. So what we did is we forced removal which we forced them to march in a line. And not only did we remove them from their indigenous homeland, which is where the only place they knew how to farm and grow food, uh, we also did some other atrocities. So say, for instance, Michael had smallpox, okay? How you get in smallpox is by, uh, his skin will start like flecking into huge chunks, and if you touch any of his skin flecks, you'll get the infection. So the U.S. government would take blankets and go, <laughs> and get all the skin particles on the blankets and then hand them to the natives and say, here's a blanket. Why did we do that? Jose? Yeah, we wanted to kill them off. So it's easier, uh, what's easier to deal with? A dead Indian or an Indian we're removing? A dead one, that's what the US government thought. So we would try killing them through diseases purposely. Oh, by the way, we led them on a, for a forced migration of like, 800 miles, men, women, and children, and so the United States government kept a very quick pace. Well, guess what? If you fell behind, what would they do to you? Oh, they'd shoot you. Yeah, that's how we justified it. They fell behind. They were holding us back, so we shot them. That's how we justified it. Do you think we did a lot of shooting or very little shooting? A lot of shooting because we were within our legal right to do it because they were holding us up. That's your country. I tell you these things so you can make our country better. Yes? Help us be better, please. So, that is the Indian removal, also known as the Trail of Tears. Okay? Alright. So, let's do it. Um, I don't have time. Okay, I just want you to know that um, after the Trail of Tears, how do you think all the other indigenous populations felt about the United States government? You, do you think they felt trustworthy in us, or did they thought we were, you know, a bunch of pieces of shit? Pieces of shit. So, they're going to start fighting back, which makes perfect sense, correct? You saw how they treated the Cherokee. Why wouldn't they treat anyone else differently? So they started fighting back. And that's how we have a bunch of things out west. You don't need to write this down. I do want you to know that the last major battle between the U.S. government and our native population is at the Battle of Wounded Knee in 1890. And that is a bunch of men, women, and old men, old natives, were found in Wounded Knee, and the United States military executed them with a Gatling gun. Men, women, and children. Straight up execution style. That was the last big fight between us and the natives. Does this sound like a fight? Because it wasn't. It was a straight up massacre, and it was, it's absolutely despicable. Is this our last mistreatment of the natives? No, no, there was a huge New York Times article that came out about two months ago about how since the 1996, up and that was the last official day, we've been trying to breed out Native Americans here in the United States. We've been forcing Native children to leave their indigenous families and live with white people so they would forget their culture. Till 1996 here in the United States, just letting you know. Okay. Okay, Civil War. I'm going to teach it to you, U.S. Civil War. I'm going to teach it to you in about two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, you know I love the United States. Okay, I teach you these things so you can be better. All right, 
So the U.S. Civil War, you need to know it officially starts with the election of Lincoln. Okay. As soon as Lincoln is elected, uh, southern states withdraw. Now, is there plenty of other things leading up to the Civil War? Uh, yeah, Missouri Compromise, all these other things, but I don't need you to know that. Okay. You need to know in 19, in 19, in 1863, Lincoln signs the Emancipation Proclamation. It is a big deal, you do need to know that date. 1863 Emancipation Proclamation. What is the Emancipation Proclamation? Every hand should be up. Everyone should know this is a major aspect. Come on, what is the Emancipation Proclamation? Maddie. It frees the slaves. Does it free slaves immediately? No, because he didn't have the jurisdiction. He frees slaves in 1863 at the end of the war. So, he didn't have the jurisdiction in 1863. The emancipation is going to um, cause the end of slavery. You need to know the big battle is the Battle <laughs> of Gettysburg, also in 1863. Okay, so the big battle of the American Civil War is Gettysburg. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you probably know this, but you know that the South should have won the war, yes? They should have won. They were much better fighters. Um, my husband, as I told you yesterday, is from like super rural Virginia. When I met his grandmother for the first time, who was like 87, like genealogist, like super proud, like Virginia, like does genealogy and all that crap. Um, she told me that um, I was a northern intruder, so that was <laughs> great. Um, and she also said that uh, in the War of Aggression, which is how she refers to the Civil War, um, that we killed more of you. We should have won, and she's made other deplorable comments. It's pretty funny. Like, the chick is hardcore, and she, what a gal. Anyway, uh, Battle of Gettysburg. I can't tell you from the story because I don't have time, but here we go. Uh, and after four years, the North wins. Why does the North win? They're industrialized. They have more food. They have more supplies. They have more guns. The South can't produce gunpowder. The South can't produce bullets. However, with the bullets and gunpowder they do have, they kill way more northerners. So that's kind of impressive. Okay? And how did the northerners keep filling the ranks? Is they would take immigrants coming off the boat and say, hey, you want land? All you got to do is sign up for the war. And so we would just take all of these immigrants coming from Europe and force them into the American Civil War. And guess where we put them? In the front line. So guess what? They got killed in the war, so we didn't have to give them land. Okay, War of 1812. I know we're going a little bit backwards, but that's fine. Okay, War of 1812. It is between England and the United States. What's the nickname of it? I've already taught you the War of 1812, but we haven't taught this side. Andrew? The Second War of Independence. Second War of Independence, we understand what we're talking about. It's England versus uh, the United States. The United States wins again. Okay, so you should know that. However, we know that Canada is affiliated with Great Britain because that's where Harry and Meghan are living right now, correct? They're in Canada right now. They've given up their royal titles and they're now living in Canada because they're affiliated. Because of the War of 1812, Canada decides it wants its independence. This is what you really need to know. War of 1812 causes Canada to want its independence from Britain. Okay? Now, they do the most Canadian thing possible. The Canadians go to the Queen, and go to the King, uh, go to England and be like, hey England, we really love you, and we're like happy to be a part of you, but we, as Canada, would like our independence. Can you please give it to us? And bring this like, oh my God, Canada, you're so cute. Of course, have your independence. Kidding. You're writing it down. Canada asked for independence and Britain gave it to them. Literally, they asked for independence and Britain was like, oh my god, Canada, yes. Isn't that the most Canadian thing ever? Hello? Oh my god, second period of divorce. <laughs> because they didn't want to have a war of independence like America. And it's like Canada. And so like the Queen of England is still like, <coughs> 
Antarctica to Canada, even though they're not technically Antarctica to Canada, but they're like, eh, kind of Antarctica to Canada. It's a weird system. I don't need you to know that. Latin America. Okay, in Latin America, you need to know this is um, post Spanish. So this is after the Spanish leaves. So these are independent countries. So Latin America, this is post. How much time do I have? Five minutes, perfect. Okay. So you need to know that the Creoles are limiting. Are the Creoles are limiting other races into government participation. Creoles are who? White people. White people born, excuse me, white people born in uh, the Americas, correct? Peninsulares are white people born in Europe. Creoles are born in America. White people born in America. So they're limiting other people based on race. Ah, freedom, okay? You need to know. You need to know the term Cadillas. You need to know that they are regional military leaders. And they have huge political influence in Latin America. They are like military leaders. They're kind of like, what's the Mexican um, gang? No, no, that's like a gang gang. What's the, the cartel, thank you. The cartel of Mexico today. The cartel runs Mexico, you know that, correct? Because if you cross the cartel, if you try holding them accountable for the crimes, they hit, what are the cartel gonna do to you? They're gonna kill you. They're just gonna murder you and all of your family and all of your friends to show a sign so you don't cross them again. That's what the code do is true. They are the ones who are just killing everyone in order to keep the power. And you need to know that because they're gonna trust them. Okay, you do need to know, if you look over here, you need to know uh, Benito Juarez. He is the leader of the La Reforma in Mexico. He is trying to clean up Mexico. How do you think it's going to go for him? Not well. How is Mexico today, ladies and gentlemen? One of the most corrupt governments. Uh, it's in the top ten. It's not like the most, but it's in the top ten. So you need to know Benito Juarez. He's the leader of La Reforma in Mexico in the 1850s, and he's going to fail. But you know, he's going to fix it. Yeah, Simon Boliviar, he's also on my board, he's on my board, it's important enough for you to know. Simon Boliviar has a famous quote that says, I fear peace more than war, and he believed corruption and greed would rot the core of justice. Do you think that's an accurate statement? Hello? Yes, especially in Latin America. Uh, most Latin American countries, Creoles, block other races from participating in government. Why would they do such a thing? Oh, they're called racists. So, you need to know Simon Boliviar, he believes greed and corruption is going to rot politics, which is absolutely correct. Uh, the only other thing up here that you don't have down is Count Camillo de Cavour, and he's going to unify Italy. So, I would have him down as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you noticed, but we flew through that. There will be a little bit more content that I'm going to have to go back and reteach you, but... You will be perfectly perfect for tomorrow's test. I was very kind. Very kind for tomorrow's test. Does that sound good to you? So I have a little bit I'll have to piece together as uh, we go. But overall, you'll be absolutely fine for tomorrow's test. Is that fair? It's been a weird week. You'll be in a good spot for tomorrow. Okay? All right. So goodbye. We got so much done today. Oh, you people are the worst. Goodbye.